This absolute beast in front of me is the Gates model DC-10 digital clock. It's an electromechanical clock based around Stroger switches, which were used in telephone exchanges, as well as niche applications like this. The timing is derived from a synchronous motor right here. And that, in turn, drives these relays with some help from these relays on the back as well. As you can probably guess, this clock was not intended for use in the home. It's a broadcast automation clock, so it was used in TV and radio stations, and probably some other places as well. Without further ado, let's start the show by plugging it in. Draws a healthy 24 watts. The motor's running quite a bit quieter than it was before. I took it out and oiled it through the little oil hole on the bottom. Seems to be running happily now. In the front here are five projection displays. Four for each digit of the time. And one more for AM, PM. It just advanced a minute. And you heard the Relay here go. I've got to watch where I stick my fingers because this is an AC powered clock. Although most of the circuitry is low voltage, the relays are driven by 24 volts DC, unfiltered DC. The relays don't really care so much about all the uh, AC ripple. So they didn't bother with filter capacitors, which would have just been a wear item anyway. The relay on the top here controls the ones of minutes. The one underneath it controls the tens of minutes. And the big one on the very bottom there controls the hours. As far as these switches go, the one on the left is related to the time set mechanism, which I'll show you soon. I don't know what the middle one does. It doesn't really seem to do anything, but maybe it's related to an automation control purpose. And then the one on the right here is what advances the time one minute every cycle. The whole can assembly turns once per minute, one RPM, driven by that one RPM motor right over here. That's a 110 volt AC motor. So that's one of the danger areas in here where you gotta watch your fingers. Most of the connections are covered. I suspect that the motor unit here was replaced later on since the connections to that are not covered in heat shrink tubing. It has a date on it of June 25th, 1971. This sort of mechanism would have been a bit dated in 1971, but it still would have probably been the preferred way to build something like this, although not for much longer. Integrated circuits were rapidly getting cheaper in the early 1970s, and this would have been a dinosaur within a few years, but it probably kept on being used for a few more years after that, just because of how it was intended to be central to an automation system. Displays in the front are beautiful projection displays. They don't make them like that anymore. Well, unless you're the Air Force or something and you want to pay a lot of money for those things. But you won't see them in a consumer product. Alright, I'm going to unplug it and turn it around to show you guys the setting mechanism. Which is kind of interesting in itself. On the back are the set controls, which you hopefully would not need to touch very often. They might be quite inconvenient to get to if this thing was rack mounted. And you'd probably have to have someone read off the time to you, since you wouldn't be able to see the front at the same time unless you've got this thing out on a table like I do. So let's engage set mode. And we have to wait for time set mode to be active. Right now these buttons don't do anything. So we have to wait for that cam over here to come around. And then once the switch drops into it, the motor will stop, and then we'll be able to set the time. I 
You see the motor stopped, and now the red set light is lit up. It's quite a bit brighter on the camera than it does in person, but it is a fairly bright light. Alright, the first button here advances the hours, so that's the bottom switch there. You can see it's spinning around once per button press. The next switch is the tens of minutes, this guy. You'll notice that for most presses of the button, it'll go forward two positions, but it's only going forward one digit. I'll show the mechanism again from the front, because I think it's pretty interesting. And then the final button here is the units minutes. It advances twice at one part in the cycle, but usually just advances once. You'll see it advance twice again when that group of contacts there, the rotary ones, make contact with the first set of stationary contacts. Like that. I'm not sure exactly what these connectors are all for because I don't have a manual for it. Some writing on the bottom here as well. It says accepted February 18th, 1972 by number 172. So perhaps this is the original motor unit after all. And at the bottom here we've got a little sticker that says serial number and model number. But uh, it just lists DC10 for the serial number, which is the model number. And then I guess this is the serial number underneath. I doubt they made all that many of these. It says 900-0037-001. Maybe the 37 is the serial number part. I don't know for certain. You can see the back cover is bowed in a bit. Maybe this thing got impacted at some point. I'm not sure. It has two of these removable plugs, which were apparently never used. Nothing was ever soldered to them. But this final one is missing, and maybe that one was used for something. Hopefully it's not an issue sticking those in while it's plugged in. Guess not. Nothing happened. These relay covers are annoyingly loose. But thankfully they're all there. And have not been broken. It's got a uh, 0.8 amp fuse. An unusual value. Alright, that's all there is to see on the back. Well, other than the back of these projection displays, I guess. I'm going to turn the clock around now. So you can see both the front and the back to a degree. Alright. I've got the clock turned sideways now. We're still in set mode. Light is still on. And there's the display. 12.41 p.m. So let's advance that to 12.59. So tens of minutes. And then ones of minutes. And you'll notice that when in set mode, advancing the ones of minutes or tens of minutes does not cause a rollover to the next digit. That's a nice feature. It's going to do a double advance now and going from 0 to 1. And run 5 in the tens of minutes position. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. I'm going to bring the ones and minutes back to 9. Alright, we're at 12.59 p.m. Now I'm going to disengage set mode. The light goes off. The motor starts running again, and the time advance cam is coming around. 
This thing's so big it's hard to capture everything at once. I guess I can't. So I'm just going to show the works. Now it says 1 p.m. I'm going to advance the time to 11.59 p.m. Oh, I caught it right on the moment the uh, cam was in position for set mode. Nice. All right, let's bring it around. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 11 8 9 Now I'm going to turn off set mode and let it advance the time After that loud kerchunk, it now says 12 p.m. You notice that the p.m. did not change to a.m. yet. It'll do so on the next minute. I've got to wait for that to come around again. There we go. And when it switches from a.m. to p.m., it does so by advancing the hours stepper switch by one more position I don't know why it doesn't double advance like the other stepper switches do maybe it would have been tricky to solve that for some reason I'm sure this thing was quite expensive when new and took quite a few hours to build as well with all those hand soldered connections I'm kind of surprised they didn't use connectors for some of these things. If you ever had to replace one of those stepper switches, it would be a real pain in the butt. To close this video out, I just put it in set mode and I'm going to cycle through the digits of the minutes just so you see what the digits look like. And I'll turn off this light so you get a better view of them. Now we're in set mode again. And I'll advance the digits. You'll notice that the digits are not perfectly even. That's unfortunately just a limitation of how these projection displays work. Each number in each digit is illuminated by an individual light bulb through a series of lenses. And the ones on the farther extremes of the bulb array on the back tend to produce somewhat uneven numbers. And 0, 1, and 2 are in the bottom row. Although the ones usually look okay. I do have the top cover for this clock, as you see here. I just had it off for the rest of the video because it would have been in the way. Most of the cool parts of this clock are on the inside. Although these displays are quite cool as well, if you ask me. Probably going to be selling or trading this clock to a friend real soon. We shall see. Thanks for watching.